It's a rejoicing atmosphere that has been ushered in through the Sunday school. And I want us to translate the psalm as I. Psalm 100, please, on the board. Thank you. It, we put it in a personal way. Like, I will make, I will do, I will do this. We are trying to make the promise to our God. Since we have been able to leave our houses and come up over here, let's be personal. I always emphasize on personal because that's the juice of a Christian living, which we are talking about. Let's put it in the first person. In the first person. Ready? Go. I, I will, will make, make a joyful noise, noise to the Lord all the year. I, I will worship the Lord with gladness. I will, I will come, come into his presence, presence with singing. singing. Verse 3. Verse 3, please. Somebody there. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. I will persevere. Persevere of heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. On who secretly slanders a neighbor, I will destroy. A haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not tolerate. This is not Psalm 100. No, we're not in Psalm 100. May the Lord receive praise in all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we want to make a joyful noise over to the worship leader, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Someone alive this morning, let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah! hallelujah. Let's close our eyes and begin to worship God. Let's tell God, uh, let's tell Him thank you for all He has done for us throughout the week. Let's tell Him that He's worthy, that there's no one like Him on earth, even under the earth.
Hallelujah. Who's ready to praise God tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
facing the door. Like turn backward, backward facing the door. This way, everyone please turn backward facing the door. Turn backward facing, facing the, the door. door. Please. Turn backward facing the door. Backward facing the wall. Come on. Come face on. the door. Okay. Uh, when I st when I start singing, one thing we should do, we should turn. Imagine, just see, vision God in your presence, vision God in this altar, and begin to turn front. Worship how you, worship God how you worship the president if the president is here. Amen. And how you be honored, how you be quiet. Hosanna oh, in the highest. God will lift up your name. Oh, Lord, we lift up your name.
God who reigns, this God who reigns not just in this little tabernacle where we are, but all over the world, the universe. He is reigning. He's in control. Can you believe that? Can you imagine that? It's unimaginable. That's as big as he is. We cannot imagine him. We cannot imagine the things he does. Because right here, where he's dealing with us, where he's listening to us, he's listening to many churches, many voices all over the world. Can you imagine that? No. No. He is looking at us. And we ask him this morning, Lord, look into us. Look into us for who we are, for what you have created us to be. Are you seeing, oh Lord, are you seeing what you really created us to be? Are we that vessel? Are we that creature? Let's examine our hearts this morning. Am I what God created me to be? Where have I gone astray? What is that in my traits, in my character, that often disappoints my God who made me an image of himself to love? To even be powerful in love. Because when you love with the love of God, it has no bounds. To be bold. To be in charge. He says they should take charge of the earth. Have I proved that? Am I in charge? Or am I being dragged by the nose? By the laws of the world? Just trying to imitate what those who have failed God have put up outside there, out there. They are trying to control us in many ways. They are controlling what we see. Is that what God created us for? Have I disappointed him at midnight, in the morning, on my own? Father, look into us and see those parts you should take out to replace them with what you intend for us to be. Lord, look, look, Lord, look, Lord, into my heart. Look, Lord, into my brothers and sisters' hearts. Look, Lord, at the heart of this church. World missions, is that what you want, you started it for? Am I fulfilling? Am I just coming here to join? Am I coming here to contribute? Am I coming here to make up for what God had intended us to do? Am I feeling that part that is missing, that made him send me to be a member of this church? Am I living it? To be trampled upon. That part, that character, that boldness he gave me, that gift he gave me, that blessing he gave me. That part, so nobody else can fulfill. There are many of us here with talents. That is their talent, nobody else has it. Am I letting it rot? Father, look, look, look at everybody standing here. Look at those who are not even here. Are they doing what they should be doing there? Do they have a good excuse like job? or sickness or anything, to be out here. Even when it is slight sickness, they can quickly come and receive the healing. Father, look at us, both in here and outside. Is that what we are supposed to be? Look, Lord, look at our talks, look at our conversations, look at our associations. Look at us, Lord, look, 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 Lord. And please, Lord, as we will rub off a dirt on a clean sheet, rub off that dirt in our clean body that you made. And you said, and all that he made is good. And you looked at it and you said, it is good. He created me, looked at me and said, I am good. He created you, looked at you and said, you are good. Am I, am I continuing in that goodness of the Lord? Father, we give you praise for your mercy. We give you praise for your mercy because you are giving us chance this morning to make amends, to clean off. Father, renew us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name and put into us that which you created us for. Father, this church needs workers. It needs those who can stay in their house and say, oh, this thing should be good for my church. It is those who will say, oh, I will tell this to my other friends in church. Let us do this. Father, it is not a church where we dismiss whatever is the plan or dismiss what the Lord has brought into our hearts. Father, look into our hearts, look into our hearts, look into our hearts and remind us of those moments we should have done something and we didn't do it for the work of God. Not just money, not money. God can bring money from other places if we refuse. Not money, but that character that matters to him. He is seeing us one by one as we are on our way to heaven. He is not seeing our dress or our shoe or our, our hair 
or our shirts or pants. He's not seeing them. He sees those souls that are standing and calling on him. He looks. He looks. What does he see? Father, look on us and see what you have put in us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. As we come out to praise you, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. You have done so many things in this church that we need to praise you for. We cannot complete saying them, Lord, but this morning we are giving you some time, Lord, to listen and enjoy the praises of your people. Enjoy the worship of your people. Enjoy, enjoy the testimonies that the world, that our friends, that those who have not believed, we hear and know that God is still alive in the 21st century. God is still doing those miracles in the Bible. God is healing. God is answering prayers. May the testimony ever come to us one by one and as a group that we may realize. We will go out boldly telling people, yes, my experience these days, oh, it's like what is in the Bible. It's like what is in the Bible. Lord, you have made it so. Because if we can pronounce that you are God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, then what you did yesterday, you are doing today, and you will do tomorrow. Help us to understand the word of God and stand by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Could we be seated, please? Well, this is the time everybody is waiting for, in the third Sunday. And we would like to take numbers of people who want to testify to the goodness of the Lord. And we shall start from the West End, the West End of the church. If you have any testimonies, little things or big things, they are all welcome. Could you please raise your hand, indicate by raising your hand if you have a testimony unto the Lord this morning. Because that's what we've come to do. And we do it regularly, and because we do it regularly, he brings it on. He brings it on regularly. And we never lack. This church will never lack a testimony for the Lord. Amen. And please, that will be number six. Okay. Number six. Any more? Okay. Any more from the West End? Any from the South End here?
usher in the testimonies. Can we wait for uh, on the uh, sister Yetunde? Haya, haya, Jesus, haya, 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 Jesus, haya, haya, haya. like this month in church and uh, I, I'm not saying that <laughs> it was good you know I do feel like I should have come to church but I just want to thank God so much for just you know being with me every single week of this month um, this half of uh, my school nursing was on mental health and I was not expecting the worst <laughs> and that's what I received the worst and it was just really hard medications um, test after test, difficult teachers, um, lack of organization. It was just everything was telling me that I would not succeed. And I would just, you know, I just felt very, very um, unhappy and depressed. But, you know, thank God I had, I had my family. I had good classmates. I just kept going on. And I realized that no matter what, you know, everything, there's never going to be an ideal or easy time. And, um, this is just what I learned. I mean, I, I was blessed because I met so many good patients. I met so many, you know, good people. Um, I had a teacher here. It was just, I, I, I'm thankful. Um, at the same time, it wasn't an easy ride. So I, I think I'm made better, and I, um, I'm a better person, a better student, a better daughter, a better nursing student. <laughs> so I thank God. I thank God for my dad. I know it hasn't been easy for him, you know, it has not been easy. I mean, financially, I just thank him because I wouldn't be here without him. I really wouldn't be here. Um, you know, he's also been here with me emotionally and spiritually. You know, there are times when I just be stressed and there are, you know, things I need to do at home and I'm not doing them and I, I know that it's my, my part as a daughter to do it. And so I just want to thank God because, you know, really I just thank God for my dad just sticking in there, sticking in there for me and for my sister. So thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sister Jennifer, please. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm here to thank God for three main things. And one of it is my, my brother had to go to the embassy to get his student visa. And I just thank God that he got it. Like, and so I thank God about that. And also I thank God for my brother, my... my other brother and he he just turned 21 like sometime this month and I know like a year ago he was involved in an accident in, in the UK and I just want to thank God because it was just for me it was just like God I thank you for the gift of life because it wasn't yeah so um and also I got a job and I wanted to thank God also for that because God he's always favoring me like I feel like I'm always thankful so I just wanted to thank God for everything Thank you. Sister Emma, please. God, let say be your name. Oh God, you are so good. Let say be your name. Hallelujah. 
I'm just out here to give thanks for three things. I have so many things, but I just, to, you know, to not to take your time. I'm just going to bless the name of the Lord for three great things in my life and my family. First of all, my, my sister's husband, my in-law, he had a stroke, which most of you knew about sometime early this year. And that was one of the reasons why I traveled to Nigeria when I traveled. I want to thank God because God has been faithful. When I went home and I saw this man, I don't know where on earth I had faith to gather with the faith of my sister because his case looked like a very hopeless case. But I told my sister, because I just went there to encourage her. I was afraid too, but I had to brave up. You know, I just gathered strength, energy, faith from wherever I could. And I held my hands with her and I said, God is going to do it. I told her not to look at the things that she's seen. The blood pressure was just going up and down. I mean, he was almost like a vegetable when I got there, when I saw it. But we still had to believe God because the law says we should believe, right? We just kept on believing. And God did not fail us. To cut a long story short, today he has graduated from all the little, little steps and is using a, a cane. Amen. Amen. Today, when he talks, you'll understand what he's saying. Praise God. As a matter of fact, my father died without even knowing that he had a stroke. My mother did not even know that he had a stroke until during my father's funeral. You know, so today he's walking, he's, he's walking. I mean, he's not dragging his feet. He's using a cane. He's attending his pastor's meetings. He can talk. The first day, my sister called, called me and told me, the first day he started writing again because it's right-sided. He said there was nothing, just like this little kid, you know, scribbling stuff on the, that was how it was. But as those days with therapy and everything went by, he was able to write A to Z without any scratching. Everything was clear. I just want to thank God because it is the Lord's doing. And I give him the glory. Secondly, my brother, I've always been praying about my brother too. God is doing great things. I just can't thank God enough. God gave him a job. He carelessly lost the job. The Lord, in his mercy, restored the job back to him. The job is outside but Harcourt is offshore, one of the all servicing companies. He goes three weeks. Once he goes, we're always, all of us, we're on our knees praying. Because we're still holding him because we don't know what he's going to do. But the prayer is this. My only prayer when I kneel down to pray concerning him is that God, meet him there. You took him there for a reason. Nobody is there with him. You just meet him there. Whatever, whichever way you want to meet and arrest him, meet him. And to the glory of God, we're beginning to see little, little changes. To the glory of God. I was on Amen. the phone the other day. We were all praying. He has not showed up. No communication. But as I was praying with my mom on the phone, the door, he rang the doorbell. And there he was. We gave God the glory. And lastly, sorry to take your time. Lastly, you. I just want to thank God because the Lord has given me a job that I've been looking for since 2009. Praise the Lord. And the job has given me peace. It has given me less stress. I've realized that I sleep more hours now. <laughs> I rest more hours. When I look at myself in the mirror, I don't have sunken eyes. Amen. I don't feel too tired. Six, I mean, eight hours, I was working 12 hours and doing home health, running up and down. But eight hours of this job, I'm able to gather strength. Even after the eight hours, I'm like, it's already eight hours. We're out again. Ten to six, we're already out. I come back. I rest. I could still go out and do other things. I just want to bless the name of the Praise Lord. Praise the Lord. And it's the job is at Sheriff Department. I want to give God the glory. From UCLA to Sheriff Department, God is faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Sabi, 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 Chikwendu. Praise the Lord. That song for the interest of those who don't understand it, it says that he who began a good work in me.
they will complete it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I wanted to come out and give this testimony. One man was saying that you are still in pain. What are you going to testify now? I said, I will start from what God did. <laughs> and as I praise him, he will finish the race. Praise Amen. the Lord. Last month, 18th of uh, September, you know, it has been a different story. You know, we drive, we go out, we come back safe. Some of us, we take it for granted. You may be as careful as you are driving, but you don't know that another reckless driver can even mess up your day. So, on that day, I pick up my daughter, Leslie, because he dismissed from school on time. And that she dismissed from school on time. Then we went and picked up something for her, which she will use at school. Then after that, Amy called and said that he was out of school. I said, okay, let us just reverse to go and pick up Amy. We changed direction from where we are going. So we are just there on the stoplight, traffic light, waiting for the green to show up. So this is funny boy came, boom, at the back of my car. And uh, in fact, I didn't know where I was. You know, my temper just went up. I was really, you know, dizzy. So let's say call 911, and I ended up at emergency. Anyway, to make the long story short, I thought that this, it was later that uh, the attorney told me that, the, according to the police report, that man had no driver's license. And that they impounded the car and locked him up. But I don't know whether they have released him, which I'm sure they have. Um, from there, you know, my husband made him call, he called Brotoni, or, you know, pastor and the wife, all of them, they came and prayed. Even my sister, who was about going to work, he showed up, she showed up, and they prayed. Uh, two weeks ago, I started having this uh, problem on my right thumb, and this thing had been giving me excruciating pain. It was very painful. You know, even as I'm talking, this thing. So I went to the hospital. My doctor was looking at it. I said, look at what, how my, this thing is doing. Even as, oh, this is triggering finger. That has been, it's, it's unusual. So it's something called for prayers now because that's the pain that I'm going through right now with this. As I'm testifying to the goodness of the Lord for what he did, saving me and my daughter from that accident, I pray that he will perfect the healing. It has started in my body. Praise the Lord. crying this morning. She started crying. Tears of joy. She started crying because she knew what it meant for me to travel. She remembered the prayers. Whenever we come for women meeting, my prayer request. Even my sister here, Sister Esther, she was just shedding tears. But that's tears of joy. I say, Amelia, so God at last answered in travel. My brethren, the Lord is good. Amen. Even as I made the journey, all I was just telling people, 
Just thank God for me that I'm here. Just thank God I made it. I made it. I least expected. I look back, I look front. I remember the past. It is only a fool that will forget the past. I remembered the Saturday when we will linger here crying for my paper. I said, Lord, I want to go. I want to go and see my family. I said, so I can make it. I can see my family. The Lord is good. I remember last time when I came here. I said, pray for me. They have they were praying. When I touch uh, uh, Dr. Fable, I said, please, I'm traveling. Then they prayed. After the prayer, somebody now tapped me when, when I came out. Emilio, oh, I, I don't know what I'm seeing. This journey you are making, please, you'll be very careful. Blah, 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 blah. So Satan wants to instigate something if you are in me. But I said, no, no. He that has started this will perfect it. Amen. Because this is what I've asked the Lord. Um, brethren have been praying. Brethren have been praying. And the Lord did it. And all along, I kept quiet. I said, is that so? Is that so? And now it has come for me to go as I have asked the Lord, to travel, to go and see my family. Then Satan is bringing me. I said, is it? Satan, you are a liar. And to God be the glory. As I trusted him, as I asked him, the Lord fulfilled. The Lord played his own part. Brethren, I met my family in good health. I met my family. They were so happy to see me. I myself, I was also happy to be there. And I thank God for bringing me back safely. And I pray that all glory, all honors, will be ascribed unto him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. She has given a testimony that covers about 10 years of waiting to go home. More than 10 years of waiting to get home and see her family. Shall we call Darisa Uwe? Boy, I took a where will I begin? God has been embarrassing me with blessings. Please put your hands together for God. With many, many blessings. I have seen that if you have God, you have no cause for you to be afraid. Amen. It's unfortunate that my wife is not here, but I know she's sleeping now because she came back from work after working 77 till this morning. She is sleeping, but her spirit is here. Um, sometime two years ago, I went to a party with my wife, Enugu, Enugu's party. We lodged in a hotel. The next morning, my, wa my wife was bleeding, full of blood, from hotel to emergency room. I was with the kids. The next news I had was they were taking my wife to the surgery room. Little did we know that my wife had a erotic uh, pregnancy, you know, atopic pregnancy, that uh, she was bleeding, and they, they took out one of the uh, tubes. People started spreading news. Uh -huh. Peter, you have been having kids back to back. Now, no more kids. <laughs> but Satan was trying, but God was there. A few months ago, my wife told me, I don't know what is happening to me. Little did I know that my wife was pregnant. And that the church can now see it now. We have retired though, but God said that, no, I will still prove that I am still 
God. So that child is the God's own child. Number one. Number two. I was in my house with my kids. I was trying to put Jesse to bed. I had an unusual sound at my corridor. I said, no, this is unusual. Maybe my kids were fighting or something has fallen. The next thing I had was, kuk, 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 kuk. I said, no, no. I looked through the window. I saw a Mexican guy without shirt, dragging, fighting with my bike and the other things. I, I said, what is? I opened the, I opened the uh, window. I said, who are you? Get out of that place. He's, he told me, if you come out, I'll kill you. I said, no, you won't give me my house. I opened the door, uh, uh, door to the corridor. On stepping outside, he now jumped over the fence. I jumped with him. Without the shirt. <laughs> because he was carrying my bike. So, as we were running, I called Ugo to get me a cell phone. Ugo is here. My kids are here. So, Ugo brought my cell phone. I was calling 911 while I was running after the man with my bike. Well... To call the long story short, he was caught and my bike was recovered. <laughs> then, please, I know it might turn out to be laughing now. Supposing he had a gun. <laughs> Supposing I was not there and my kids were the only people at home. This is food for thought. When God does something, you know, it has been, it, this happened about in uh, August. But I have not had the opportunity to come out to say it. But today, I'm a happy man. Because I want to say before God, for God to acknowledge what he has done in my family. The third one, Jason. Everybody saw what happened in the church. Sister, you were there. Jason, I was carrying Jason. The next day, Jason was just dropped, was not breathing. She helped. God used her and the good, uh, many other people here. And uh, our doctor. Doctor, God will bless you. And, you know, all of us were there. The next thing that happened, Jason was running around. We went to the hospital. The little did we know that Jason had about 105 uh, uh, degrees of uh, temperature. So Jason came back. The next thing again, Jason had a lump, and Jason was walking like an old man. I said, what? For two weeks. Then we went to different hospitals. Then finally they said that we have to see a specialist to take out the lump on uh, the right uh, this in labs here. When we go to the specialist, Jesse said that I'm here, that nothing happened to me. So the man looked at it and said, take him back. In one more time, bring him back. Let us see what's going on there. Today, Jesse is working and nothing has happened to Jesse yeah. again. <laughs> After four hospitals. Then, brothers and sisters, I have every cause to tell you we have been searching for house. Where is the money? Just like Abraham and Isaac. We are going to sacrifice. Where is the lamb? <laughs> now we'll be looking for a house. No, no money. But God said, keep on looking. Amen. We got one in, uh, in uh, Norwalk. Seven bedrooms. I looked at my wife. God said, move in there. The day we went there for inspection after paying. I would have said, no, I saw people with tattoos all over their body with all these big muscles. I won't raise my kids here. That was how we canceled. <laughs> but let me tell you, whatever is yours is always yours. Satan will never take it away from you. Today, we found a fantastic house. I said fantastic house. Amen. There were so many conditions. But God said that that house was going to be our own. Pastor is here to come to that house to bless it. And I have not invited anybody until Pastor steps into that house to bless that house. We got a four bedroom house in Bellflower, one of the best areas of Bellflower. Then, if you want to know where the house is, it is all Cerritos. And everybody knows about Cerritos. Mine is all Cerritos Avenue, which is, it is more higher than Cerritos as a place. Wow. Praise God. Amen. So please, there are still many more to go. Yes. Church. Please help me in praying for my wife's uh, self-delivery. Be with us. Love us. We love you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I say, Sister Patience, no cap for. Sister Patience, no cap for.
all the time. Brethren, I'm just here to tell you that I've got my green card. Woo! Tell my mom really quick. I just have two testimonies to give. I want to thank God for my job. Um, a lot has been going on at that place. I've only been there for three months, but um, I trust that God is still walking with me, and I'm going to be there for more months. Um, also, I'm going through an application process that requires um, letters of recommendations from my professors. Um, God has just granted me like really kind of just a merited favor. Because these professors, I haven't spoken to them in like four years. And I emailed one of them like last week at night. It was like 9 p.m. And I said, oh, Professor Sherry, I don't know if you remember me. I took your chemistry course. I really need a letter of recommendation because I'm applying to school. The guy emailed me like two minutes later and was like, oh, for sure, I remember you. You were the black girl that sat in front. I can give you a letter of recommendation. I was like, okay, I can definitely, like, it was just kind of really weird because I hadn't talked to this guy in four years. I was like, how do you remember me? This class had 300 people in the class. There was like five black people and we all look alike. So it was just amazing. I just thank God. Another of my physics professors, same story. They all were just like, oh, yeah, we can write you a letter of recommendations. Just, you know, come over and tell me what you need, and I'll write it. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. This is, this is a sign. This is a sign. But anyway, more and more coming, more coming, more coming. In like five months, I'll give you some more. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, family continues. Praise the Lord. Thou art worthy. husband this morning as y'all can see he's conspicuously absent um, but something came up last minute an emergency and he had to go but we had planned to be here today so I said I will come and just you know see my church family after our wedding I just really want to bless the name of the Lord and I really want to thank everybody in this church World Missions Christian Fellowship um, I don't know what to say. I don't know where to begin. But I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for just being there on September 9th and supporting me and supporting Christian, supporting my whole family for the love that was just shown to me. It's just beyond words. And I just pray that the Lord Almighty will bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to say a big thank you to my pastor, Pastor Rizzi and Mom. They were really a big support Woo! this whole wedding planning Amen. process. Even from the from all the um, lessons that we had, I learned so much from the pastor. I learned so much from his wife, and I'm beginning to see some things that <laughs> <laughs> that that we talked about. And I know that God is on the throne, and Amen. God is definitely working. Amen. I also want to say thank you to my family, my fa my dad, my mom, my sisters, my brother, my my in laws. They were just everybody was just phenomenal. I thank them so much, and I thank the church. Christian thanks you too. He's going to come, and when he comes, we'll do this again because I need him to stand here and talk to the Amen. church. Amen. And so it's not just me, but both of us. We really thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Every single person in this church, all my aunties, my uncles, you guys were awesome. You did. Good. I don't want to get in trouble, do. so I'm not going to call names, but I'm just going to say thank you guys from That's the bottom of my are. heart. I love you. That's who we are. That's what we do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Evidence. The Lord. <laughs> um, he was in the Bible study. He was here. This is his second time here. 
Um, I just thank God because he's been awesome in my family. This year has just been a year of good news. I mean, like, Amen. Remember when we used to fast for like five days a week? <laughs> Am I in high school? We fasted like every Friday. It paid off. Every week. <laughs> And like, I remember when we got the lottery and lost the lottery and just, I just thank God because like this year is our year and Amen. there's nothing the devil can do to take it away. I mean, like he has blessed us tremendously and I just thank him for um, Ike Chiku here. Amen. I mean, like labor is not easy. Don't get pregnant. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> But I thank God for him. I mean, like, the <laughs> he's out and you were enjoying him. <laughs> thank God. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look us over. Amen. And give a clap offering to Jesus. Amen. We thank God for his mercies. Amen. I just want to say one thing, and that to make it very clear for those who have a little confusion. This is my first daughter, <laughs> if you don't know. And status-wise, she's Ada. Amen. And by name, she's also Ada. Amen. And I want to say, if anybody asks you about Ada Mokafo, it's asking you the status Ada, and it will remain Ada Mokafo forever. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But when you ask about Mrs. Anomodo, that's hey. what she is. Or Ada Numodo as a wife. Uh -huh. But as Ada, status wise, is Ada woke up. Woo! Praise the Lord! On the day we will have um, marriage counseling, we might be more ready to receive what a girl becomes when she's married. As if there are new things to learn. Amen? He is suffering from romnesia. shall leave their father and their mother and give to one another and both shall be one. Amen. Let no man put asunder. Sister Obietibona. Well, the last one is Sister Obietibona. I'm not going to ask for more because the internet will close on us at 1 p.m. Please save your other testimonies for next month. Amen. I have a very big God. Always by my side. A very big God. By my side. By my side. I have a very big God. He's always by my side. A very big God. By my side. By my side. I have a very big God. He's always by my side. A very big God. very big God and he's been always by my side I'm here to testify of God's goodness to me to my family and to this church on Tuesday after work as we are going home you know I have uh, a co-worker who have been uh, trying to know how to drive and I sit by the side of her as somebody who has a California driving license. So she drives very well, only that she doesn't have that card or license. So as we were going home, here come this uh, 
Hispanic guy. And uh, Please, hit so hard. <laughs> he hit so hard on my side and that I had to shift to the other side. The thing moved me to the, to the, to the driver's side. And uh, he stopped. And everybody stopped, actually. And he came out, and I was shouting. I was, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he came, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, you're sorry? What's wrong with you? He said, I'm hurrying to go to, to work. And I said, now you will get to do the work. <laughs> so he was saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, please, let's get your information. But you know, actually, at that point, I was confused. I didn't know what I was saying. But all I could remember was that I said, I need to be, I need to be taken to the hospital right now because I need to be checked out. And when the paramedics came, it was so funny. That when they came, I didn't know they, they asked me questions. They said they asked me questions three times. Do you want to go to the hospital? And I said no. All of a sudden, I said, who is taking me to the hospital? They said, we already asked you. And you said no three times. And I said, please, I'm sorry. Can you take me to the hospital? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> they eventually, even paramedics took me to the hospital. There was no scratch. No, no, no broken bone. I thank God for that, for that. If not because of this uh, um, seat belt, it would have been something else. But thank God, I got there. They checked me out. My husband came. I stayed there for a while. I, I told him, please call the pastor. He said, no. If you call the pastor now, he will think that you are dying, and he will leave everything that he is doing and come here. Let's wait until we get home. We we'll call him. So I just give God the glory that I'm here standing. Why no husband? broken bone. To God be all the glory in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord for all these accidents. Uh, can we call our deacon, Dr. Ofebu, to express himself? Richard. Praise God. I don't want to start any song because we already wasted a lot of time. Yeah, the reason for coming up here is to give God thanks and praise. Um, also to thank members of our church here for rallying around my family during our 50th birthday celebration. We Can you hear me at the back? Okay. I'm saying that I really want to give God the thanks and praise and also to thank members of our church for being with us during that celebration, you people really made us very proud. I mean, we cannot be anywhere else than to be with you people. I know people will be saying, oh, where is your wife? Where is your daughter? Uh, just for information. They didn't want anybody to know, but they're in Sacramento. They're <laughs> <laughs> so probably before the end of the service, they will be back. And uh, we thank God that they traveled there safely and came back, and they're going to come back safely. I believe that already. Thank you very much. Shall we rise? We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. Our soul has found rest. Oh Lord. think of all the testimonies that we are given. These testimonies show the presence of the Lord in our lives. Please note it, brothers and sisters. The presence of God in our lives. He does not sleep, neither does he slumber. We can trust him. Even when we think the situation is so bad, we can trust him to snatch us out, to give us that we've been looking for over 10 years. To provide for our family members, to answer our prayers. Can we stop doubting that God answers prayers? Because that will spoil the prayer you are praying. So we continue to thank Him for the visas, for the jobs, 
for the sick who have been healed, for salvation and uh, saving us from accidents, for those who have gone home, for deliverance, for taking care of our family, family members that we are worried about, for green card, for celebrations, is there anything you are praying about that you want God to do for you? Let us sing that, thanking him ahead of time. By faith, we thank God ahead of time. We thank him ahead of time for more testimonies. We thank him for the things he will yet do. no more because evidence clear evidence testimonies have shown that you can and that you will and that you are with us so father be blessed from our souls from deep down our souls that we believe you today we stand before you lord declaring our faith in you many more testimonies were not given some i know they were not given but they are yet to be given. So we bless you, Lord, and we pray for those who have never experienced this. If it is because of unbelief or sin or stubbornness or not expecting you to do it, Father, cleanse their hearts Amen, and Lord. put in the faith of God yes. in their hearts. Yes. For yes, you can do all things that are good for us. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, As we Lord. sit to listen to the message, message through the messenger, we pray, Lord, that through all these testimonies, we may believe what is being told us. For your word is true. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, we bless your name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our preacher today is our deacon. And he's coming to give us the word of God. Hallelujah. Deacon Peter, all here. To God be the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord for his presence in our midst this morning. The sermon has been preached. I want to thank my daddy here. Um, Psalm 133, verse 1 says that how wonderful and how pleasant it is when brethren gather together. Some of us might not know it, but a lot of sickness, emotional sickness, has been cured while we're sitting here. It's not all about wealth. It's not all about money. Being in an assembly of God's people matters a lot to believers. Amen? I just want to ask my Brothers in the control room, I don't know if that song was able to be put in the, on the file. In, all right. Can I have it on the screen, please? And I want us to, I want us to stand up because um, I, what I'm going to preach in the, in the next 30 minutes was not what I really prepared. Because I keep telling you guys, I'm a man under authority. And uh, my pastor has never, for one day, called me to say, Rapida, I want you to preach or say something like this. 
I pray I prepare something different. But even, even that, in that preparation, I, I was a little bit said, is this appropriate for today or for what today is? Being a enrichment, uh, third week of the enrichment Sunday. So just call me around 3.30 p.m. to be precise yesterday. I was battling with the kids, children are jumping up and uh, said, Peter, how are you? I said, fine. I said, okay. Um, you know you have to speak tomorrow. I said, yes. Um, I said, I will. I said, I will call you back maybe around 8 o'clock to tell you if I will be able to speak or not. Then he, he, what he did was to give me a hint of what today is all about, which is uh, so, uh, third day, third, third Sunday of the enrichment, uh, so the school enrichment month. So I want to thank God and uh, I stayed up a little bit and just uh, said, let me just, uh, I, I first of all pray and ask the Lord, Holy Spirit to direct me. So as I was preparing, God gave me a message. God contrary to what I earlier prepared. So I just want us to share in the next 20, 30 minutes for this is a song that came to my mind as soon as I finished speaking with my pastor. He didn't tell me to, uh, to bring this song. So I want, I want us to write for us, for some of us, the old school who know this song, I want us to join, please, let's just sing that song. It's uh, hard till the shepherd's voice I hear. Mommy and the sister Sabina, you guys, uh, this is one area I we need your heart till the shepherd's voice I hear. That's too low. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stand. We don't know how to sing, but I know what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. Bring the wonders, bring them in. Wonders, uh, uh, that, that song was taken from a book of uh, Luke. It says, bring the wonders once in. Bring them, bring them out from the cold. My topic this morning is, I titled it, uh, When the Church Becomes an Aquarium. 
and not fisher of men. When the church becomes an aquarium, I know, and not fishers of men. I don't know if, um, who knows what an aquarium is here? No, I want to put up your hand if you know what an aquarium is. That's very good. How many of us have it at home? Aquarium. No, because. <laughs> It's the artificial fish pond which people keep, keep to for exhibition, some kind, something like that. They call it fish tank. Actually, that's the right, that's the American word for that. And I say that if you want to see what it looks like, if you go to where they sell some of this, like a fish for decoration in homes, if you want to see. It, on a large scale, there's one in Long Beach here. And there's one in San Diego. They call it a sea world, right? Yeah. Sea world. They are there. No. As big as they are, it is another control of what man has created to control an attempt by man to control nature. You know how fish, species of fish swim in the ocean? They have a lot of freedom. They move around, you know. The man did that to, be, to make sure that he is closer to nature. But unfortunately, he cannot get all the fish, all the species of fish he needs for the ocean there. So uh, somebody might be wondering, why am I, when did I become a marine scientist? I'm not one. And I don't intend to be one. The one I'm trying to, I'm using that analogy to draw our attention to the role the church is not supposed to be playing. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, 18 to 9, somebody open that chapter verse of, in the Bible. If you have found it, read and read the audibly. Verse 18 to 19. Amen? So you see where I try to clarify that analogy about fish and fish tanks. Because when the church becomes an aquarium and not fish out of men, there is a problem. We are marking our month of Sunday school enrichment. And the body, so the school superintendent, the assistant, and all the supervisors have spoken a lot about the need to be here, to hear, to ask questions during Sunday school. Again, the word of God is a two-edged sword. Because as I'm speaking also, uh, speaking to Peter here as well. So let it not be that I'm trying to stay here to punctuate to anybody. But what I want to do is to bring to ourselves the problem that is prevalent to every one of us. Some of us are genuine. Some of us are self-made. Some of us are, can be avoided. 
If you look at it where by your side, where you stay, you can see there are some empty seats around. Not because we don't want to, we don't want it to be paid up. It's because of the situation we find ourselves. We have become so engrossed here in this our land of sojourn that anything that has to do with evangelism is put at the back of the burner. I want to thank God when, when, this, when I joined this church a couple of years ago, it's not like this. It's growing. I'm not going to say that it's not moving. Numerically, it's moving. Spiritually, it's moving. As somebody that came from a Catholic background, right? somebody had told me that I would stand here to speak rather than to keep my mouth like this and say, Hail Mary, and keep quiet and go back. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have believed it. So I'm using myself. I'm not... Uh, well, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that I've arrived, but I'm saying that we are growing spiritually in terms of the man of God we have here. He has helped most of us to be honest. God forbid it. If we look for this man tomorrow and we don't see him, will he still be coming here? What is holding you in this place? What is it that is holding you to make you to come? Is it come? You are coming to look at somebody because somebody is coming. Like mommy was praying, that was that was what I said at that prayer. That's this time when I had to preach. What is your commitment to this church? Is it because Rebbeinu Rezi is here? It's good for us to come because he's here because he's a good role model for most of us. But what happens if he's not here? Or he takes vacation about a month or three months, you know. As he is training us to hand over the baton, or the batons, as America would call it, are we able to accept that challenge? There are a lot of opportunities out there for us to get people to follow this place. I'm telling us that it's not, it's not by your power that you bring somebody here. They, they, you know the English adage that says that you can only lead the horse to the stream. We never force it to drink. It's true. Because the Bible tells us that unless the Lord builds, if Ben does, you and I struggle to make it. A combination of circumstances, a combination of the word of God. And what the Lord has told us, the promise of God, has given us a prominent role to play. And that role is to point others, just as John the Baptist did. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. I will decrease so that he will increase. That is our duty. No matter what happens, we make an effort. Because that's one reason why we come every Sunday, we sit down here, hear the word of God, socialize a little bit, and go home. What impact is he making on our life? Are we able to be? I'm not telling you like I keep saying. We have brought a lot of people here. I'm telling you, everybody, especially members, old members of the church, have brought so many people. They came and left. And they, thank God, Christianity is by choice. It's not like Islam, where you must believe. You must be believe, even though there's nothing to believe there. So we can't force anybody. All that we do is go out, tell people to come. Go out on the street. And what are the hindrances? What, what are the things that will make us not to do all this? You know what I discovered here is we have this mentality, businessman mentality. I, I used to think it was only, only the Igbos. The Yorubas have it as well. As a matter of fact, I will give the houses a fair, a, a fair share because they are much more open 
heart. I've lived with them. I grew up in the north. With this mentality of, oh, this is what I'm doing right now, this business, I'm doing business. I don't want this man to, I don't want this person to know this business. I want to introduce, you know what I'm saying? We are, we, it's okay, it's competition. That's the Republican spirit. We, are not, we don't have anything against it. What I have against it is when it cripples into our spiritual life, it comes into evangelism. It becomes a Jonah spirit. Spirit of Jonah. Oh, Lord. You see, I know who you are. If I go now and preach to them, they will change. You will not kill them as, you, as, you, as I want you to kill them. If I go now and tell my brother or my sister or somebody, even somebody I've been, I was, I've been quarreling with in the past, come to the church, and the person receives Christ. Or I perceive that the person is being given a, a, a role to play in the church. A role I that I felt that it threatens my role in the church. Jesus is asking us, what, what is that to us? Are we we're not supposed to hinder people from coming by our attitude, by our behavior. You will bring people here, they will surprise you though. But then, let, it, let, it, let God be the judge. What you have done is you have done what you are asked to do. Amen? Amen. So, there some of the hindrance is we, we, we risk rejection. We risk, we risk rejection, persecution, loss of approval, honor. When we witness, somebody who used to know us with, oh, is this uh, T. Theos, this uh, Theodore? Well, I used to know Theodore. I knew. Theodore cannot come and preach to me like that. Who is he? Oh, I, knew, I know this person. I know this. They can't. They're forgetting that you cannot judge him. You cannot judge anybody. The person you think is the way, you think Peter is the worst sinner in the past. What, what has he got to tell me? We foreclose our mind. We foreclose our thought. We already enjoy. We get the bias about somebody. And that's one of the worst hindrances. Fear. What will, he say? what will he say about me? He knows my past. He knows I used to steal. He knows I used to fornicate. He knows I used to commit adultery. He knows I used to do this. I used to slander people. What am I going to tell him? But the Lord said that he will not leave us empty. The moment we call upon him, come to him by faith, he empowers us, he emboldens us to speak. That sometimes people in, in other churches don't understand the move of the Holy Spirit because they believe that because I have known you 100 years ago, you must be the same. They don't understand the, the movement of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, and the, in all this, all this fear, rejection, loss of honor, honor in court because, approval in court because that's the one, the kind of honor the people in the world gives us. These are not honors. They are not approvals. I would rather that I reject approval from everybody but get it from above. Amen? Amen. So, we, the, the, the important ask us, what, but can any of this Separate us from the Lord God's love? No. It's what man says. Man said it. God has not said it. So who are we to be scared about going on the street? That's why I was on the street once sometime with my friend Uzo. I we were in Hollywood. A couple of people. That was my, my early days of evangelism when I used to, when I, when I was going there. Because that's where we used to go. You go there, you meet, you meet people, even in Nigeria, people you were in school with in primary school. One day, one of them asked who's my brothers, ask him. They asked me the same question. Is this what you come to do in America? That's why they asked the question they asked. And thank God we were together. I just said, man, this is Satan asking you this question. Somebody asked me the same question at Nkichi's, uh, Nkichi's uh, Veronica's restaurant. Give me flowers. Ask me. Now, if I give him over there, I just, I just, I, I, I said, yes, it's part of my calling. 
Somebody asked me that question about uh, some time ago when I first came over here. I was, I was going to a college in Sicily. I don't know. Some of you might know that class. When there to a prayer practice, we were singing. We were helping you know, all. That's my. I'm part of this place. That's my calling. I just can't run away from it. Helping me, you help me. The guy was. I still see him. He's one of your friends. I won't mention his name. He's. He was hurrying. Nah, let's go from here. Is this? Are we, do we come to America to sing praise and worship? Is this come to America to sing praise and worship? That was what. When the Spirit of God told me that I don't, I never belong to that place. And today I still see him. I'm not saying that he's not moving forward. He might have the best cars, he might have the best house. But then, I still, the Spirit of God is telling me. I saw him at one, at one of the uh, worship keepings one day on Avalon, and I wanted to go to him. I, I asked him. I wanted to call him and tell him, "This word you said to so and so day, ask God for forgiveness for that." But I didn't have the opportunity to approach him because it was crowded. Do not let fear what people will say about you keep you away from God. You can have everything. You can have every whatever it, you can have it. But if you don't have God's approval, they're not they're nonsense. Brave up. Be able to tell people every opportunity in your place of work, in our place of work, is an opportunity to tell people. Last Friday, I was having a training, a seven training at my job place. And there's this man, and you know, we're not supposed to talk about Jesus in school, our workplace. We're not supposed to talk about this. And this man is about 60 years old. And this man is educated. The African American. They respect him on that job. You know, so we had about one hour lunch, lunch break. So we went outside. We were eating. We were eating. And there was just sitting at the other table. He was sitting on the other side, and I saw a group of young people in their twenties and thirties, in their twenties, surrounding him, listening to him. In you know, you know how professors, how they you know they, they, they were, there was this kind of rapt attention being paid to him. He was telling them about the Bible. So I, it caught my attention. I heard of something. So I, I moved from my position. I went close. I didn't, I didn't want to be like, I, I just jumped into one discussion. So I just stopped what I was eating. I was listening. He was telling them about the Bible was translated by homosexuals. That um, Jesus married and Jesus had so many girlfriends. Jesus was, he was saying this. I kept myself because sometimes all these Muslims think they're, I thank God for Christianity. So I don't know. I say, what, what do I do? Do I keep quiet? I don't want to get into arguments because the Bible told me not to get into foolish arguments sometimes. But sometimes the Bible tells us also in the Proverbs, sometimes you shut up a fool. Then a fool that is a fool, so you know that it's a fool. I'm just trying to paraphrase. That's not how exactly it's stated there. So I go, when I got closer, I said, excuse me, um, those boys looked at me. I said, oh, no, I don't. I asked him, so where do you get the information that the Bible was translated by homosexual? He said, well, well, he didn't want to talk to me. I said, no, I want to, I want to know because I don't want you to mislead people who are listening to you. Tell me, where do you get it from? So one of the men Googled his uh, cell phone and got the Bible translation. He was asking me a question. He said, how, how did King James come about? I said, King James. I said, well, First of all, you need to know the history of Rome and Britain and, Eng and, and, and England. That why there was King James Version. There's no difference between the original Bible. What happened was this was translated through the Old English. If you don't understand the Old English, you will understand it. And besides, because of breakaway from Rome, it's not because it's not because it's not because it's not, it's not in Latin. It's still in English. So the guy looked at it and said, yes, I think well, that's what the, the, the uh, what is it called, uh, Wikipedia is saying there. That's what he's saying. So this man turned out and said, I said, well, stop telling these kids, stop telling these young men about this. This is not, you know what he did? He got up and walked away. 
When he got up and walked away, the other young man came and they was telling me, that yes, yeah, that, that thing that man told me really disturbed me. I said, please don't listen to it. Read your Bible. When you read your Bible, the Bible will make it clear what you say. So the man left. When we went back to the prayer, after the train, in the middle of the train, he came. He appealed, Peter. You know, you know, I'm 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 Freemason. I'm Freemason. I'm I'm I'm, yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm not surprised then. That's why I said I'm not surprised where I'm coming. I'm not, I'm not surprised. So if you keep quiet, there are times, there are opportunities when you are called to act. It's not acting out of militancy. Because the Bible says that zeal without wisdom is foolishness. We have to tamper our zeal with wisdom. So that when we, we can ask them out there, when they say something that is not of, 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 of our belief, you know? Amen? Amen. Can somebody read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9? Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we most of us are quick at receiving. Remember, it says that by grace, by the gift to us, is a gift to me. Is a gift. Is a gift to you. I can't come here and boast because, because I've been coming to this church for years. Then, it's my I merit to be I merit to stand here. No, God has given me that grace and that gift. What do I do with it? You see, the Bible says, "Freely you receive, freely you give." The kind of gift I don't know. Uh, we, we some of us have different attitudes of every time. Me, me, I receive. To give out. There's nothing, wrong, there's nothing wrong in you getting gifts. The kind of gift we appreciate so much is when it's tangible, physical things. We appreciate it. We announce it. But we are asked to give out spiritual gifts. Those areas, mommy was talking about the gifts we have, talent we have. The Lord is not asking us much. But those things you need, you know yourself, we know ourselves. What are the things you have? that can enhance evangelism, that can make this place filled up with people. I'm not talking about going out, bringing people here, then some, some have come to stay, some have come to observe and go. If you continue like that. But the Bible says those, the Lord, Lord knows those who are his. And those who come to him, in faith, he will not reject. Amen? Amen. So, I, I just want to, I want to I call short because I, I, have a lot, I have a very lengthy message to present this morning. But I, I want to I just let us know, realize that nothing can hinder us from, meaning, from, from going out to tell people about God. Nothing, nothing. On a day like this, you can behave like somebody who is crazy. If you, if you have about two hours, can you drive a bicycle? You don't have to drive it. You can pick up your bicycle. Drive on the street. Start giving out tracks. The person doesn't have to come here, but if the person can come, that's fine. Ask you, ask you where you worship. Tell the person, this is where I worship. That's what this month is all about. For us to get souls, for us to be enriched in the word of God, not just for our own consumption, because again, the word of God is not just for our own consumption. It is for our own, it's also for our own transformation and other spiritual transformation as well. We are becoming so comfortable, so comfortable, so comfortable that we come every day, we go, 
It becomes a ritual. Every day we have not asked ourselves, whom have we brought to the Lord? Whom have we touched? I remember one guy where, where we work, they were, the lady was complaining about my brother Ozo. Ozo is so many times, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, so this. And, uh, now she had a problem a couple of days ago. She was asking about priests. Priest. The priest that he said that is militant. He's asking about priests. Priests to pray. Because she has a nightmare. She had a, what they call a nightmare. She had an attack. And exactly what priest was, was there or told her that she said that the priest was militant. We, are, we, are, we, we, we should not forget about the urgency of the time we are in. The time we are in, nobody knows tomorrow. Nobody knows tomorrow. The problem is we keep on confusing ourselves, thinking that we build mansions. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, with going. I, I hate, you guys remember that we are mostly from Nigeria and mostly Igbos. That we both are Republican by nature. No, no, no. I'm telling you, you both are Republican. They, 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 what, what, if some of us don't even know the meaning of being a Republican. An evil man is so Republican in nature that he will acknowledge any person from anywhere in the world. As long as that person is able to beat the odds, and he will, he will recognize that person. I'm, I'm, I'm not, like you said, I'm, I'm not, there's no apology about that. They are more friendly. They can recognize you as long as you prove your metal. You prove your reward. It's not in the program saying that you is trying to look at your color or look at where you're coming from. No. So, but what I'm saying that I, I know what I'm saying. I don't have anything against against enterprise. I don't have anything against somebody setting up a business. Somebody has to pay his bill, going to work, doing all this. You know, it's, it's, we're not lazy. I'm not, I'm not as going for that. What I'm saying is, in the midst of all this, in the process of all this acquisition of wealth, where is God in it? That's my question. Let it not be Sunday, Sunday, medication, come and take it and go. No, no, no. There has to be a conscious effort to win soul. If you can't win a soul outside, Win a soul within the family. I know it's difficult to win a soul within the family, especially when you come from a family where that's a trench in some kind of occultic uh, uh, inclination. They, 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 they are, but there's nothing God cannot do. They just say, God, that if, if I just, there's somebody, I'm running this place, I have this person by my side. This is Lord, I'm, I'm bringing this, this is a sacrifice to you. This is somebody I'm bringing to you. We are so comfortable. I remember what my, one of my uncles told me. He didn't tell me to me. It's, 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 it's lifestyle. He's, he's so, he was so well off that each time he's asked to pray, his prayer is, I will try, I will try, I will try and translate it in, in English. It, it might lose it. But he says this in Igbo, in my dialect. Oh, Chineke. Abalaya hoho. Ebadaya homa. You know, if I, if I may translate it, you see, he misses the urgency of the time, saying, Lord Jesus, King of glory, do not hurry me, oh, do not hurry me. I'm, comfort, I'm com comfortable here. If this is his, was his prayer each time he prays. One day, one of my brothers, my, my late, my late brothers, ask him, you're saying this because you have the one to eat. You have, you have to eat. That's why you're, that's why you're saying it. This place is, I'm comfortable. And that's, that, that's our attitude. Not knowing that tomorrow is not guaranteed to anybody. Today he's gone. Unfortunately, he's gone. But the only thing I regret about him, he never gave his life to God. Because he, he was a staunch, I'm telling you, he was a staunch occult member. I talked to him when he was dying on sick bed. He, he got upset. This is a man who had everything going for him. He talk of cars, he had it. I asked him, did they? Have you given your life to God? From here, he got upset. Is this the dollar I will get? Is this what I will get? This is somebody who will not take a lot of nothing. Yeah, he wants dollar. You know what I'm saying? So the, the, the thing is, 
we have to be aware of the urgency of the time we are in. Do not delay that tomorrow will come. No. Every opportunity we have, let us utilize it. Let us utilize it to tell people about God. Let us drop people. Uh, some of us are very difficult to deal with, including myself. But what I'm saying is, do not tell because Peter is stubborn. Peter is difficult to deal with. Then you, you make a mistake. All you need to do is to pray for Peter. That God will continue to deal with me, to mold me, to remove those foibles around me, to make me acceptable unto his, unto his presence. That will be your, what you will do, not, not trying to condemn people. So I just want to end, and I, I don't want to spend much time. I think I've sent the message across that we have to consciously make effort to get people to God. Giving people gift is part, is, is part of it. But that's not the, that's not the, it's not the crucible. You can help somebody pay his rent or her rent or do it. God sees that. Also, it depends on the motive behind it. If you're doing it to control that person, that's the same. If, if that person is giving that person, you're not able to tell that person, look, brother, look, sister, I don't like this kind of lifestyle. I don't like your attitude to work. I don't I like attitude to the things of the Lord. I don't see you here. I don't do this. I don't, you don't do this. And if you're able to say that to that person, your heart is clear. That's, that's a gift. That gift of a, a spiritual encouragement is better than the material things you are giving to that person. Because you're saving that person's soul. Amen? Shall we stand, please? I want us to open to, I want us to, those in the, in the control room, please could you give me um, Isaiah chapter 61. If you don't mind, yeah, give it to me in the, if you have a New Living Translation, that would be great. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 2. I want us to put our hands Either your forehead or your heart. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 2. The one verse one to two. We're going to claim and appropriate this word of God. Let's say it in unison. Go. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Amen? This is not a ritual. This is not a ritual. This is a profession. This is a proclamation. We are saying this to appropriate the word of God in our lives. And I believe by his grace, this appropriation, this profession of with the word of God in our lives will remain with us. We embolden us. We give all the strength we need in telling others that there is God of Israel, that Jesus has saved us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Could we bow our heads in prayer, please? Bow your head. Begin to talk to the Lord in the next 30 seconds regarding what we have prayed, regarding this message for it to sing.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ, your son, to die on our behalf. We thank you for bringing him, Lord King of Glory, into this world to show us the light. We thank you for bringing him to disperse the work of darkness. We thank you, King of Glory, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. No other source, no other man, no other way can we come to you other than him, Lord. We thank you, King of Glory, because he said that we can even do great things through his name. We're asking, Lord, King of Glory, for empowerment. We're asking for emboldening. We keep, we give us the power we need to speak forth, to speak out your word. We bind every spirit of fear. Father, King of glory, even as we want to minister, as we want to tell others about you, Lord, you say that our past, you do not remember them. Father, King of glory, you say that all things have passed away, and we are new creatures in you, Lord, King of glory. Therefore, having that in mind, Lord, King of glory, let us move forward, let us step forward to bring souls to you, Lord, King of glory. Ancient of days, I ask, King of glory, you draw us closer to you and help us point others to you, Lord, King of glory. Just as John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Help us to be also bold enough to tell others, Behold, Jesus, who is our salvation, our Savior. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to say something about the message that has come to us on the next Sunday. I know the Sunday school superintendent, Sunday school minister, and the rest of them are coming to say something concerning what is going on this month. This month is a great opportunity for us to practice outreach. It's easy to get, uh, to forget what you used to do or what you cannot do sometimes. This month has been a great privilege for us to Call people. Call, invite neighbors. Invite friends. Family friends. Those we know. Not even those we don't know. You can still invite those you don't know. But those you know. Because when we have any function here. Every one of us have so many people you can invite. But this week is that week to extend some invitation to others. Please, I want to encourage you to, to do that. That's the, the challenge we have been given. Don't worry whether the person is going to respond or not, but, you know, try. Like Jonah, try. It's possible. God will finish what you have started. He is the person. You never know. I'm telling you, from personal experience, people have responded where I, I to my surprise that they could come after such an invitation. Wow, they came. And those we invited who came last week or two weeks ago, we should invite them again. Amen? Amen. One shot is not enough. Say, so, well, I invited him. He came. Well, he didn't stay. Keep inviting that person. Keep inviting. Remember, it is for that person's soul. 
that person gets saved, you will be happy. You will have a reward in heaven. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday will be a, it's a very special Sunday in this church. We have a, a minister coming from outside Los Angeles County. Let me put it that way. To speak to us. I've known this man for over, let me say, 30 years. Faithful man of God. He's coming to speak to us. And it's the, it's the conclusion, it's the conclusion, right, of our Sunday school, well, for, the, for, for this month. Hmm? Enrichment or enlargement is we, 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 we need to try this week. I'm going to ask the, the, the ministers, in fact, to invite people. Also, to call some members. I'm going to ask the, 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 the Dickens to make some calls, too. I'm going to ask the Sunday school, uh, of course, they have their own people, Sunday school teachers and the superintendent. Everyone make some phone calls. Here, spend time. Go, maybe invite somebody. You will be surprised how many people will show up here. Amen? Amen. Let us try. Give God a chance this time. Let him surprise us. Let's not be in a fish pond. Not circulating. Let's extend out. God will help us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please, as we prepare for our offering, could we listen to the following announcements? As usual, we have uh, Wednesday locations for Bible study that helps to enrich our faith. One is here at 7.30. If you are living around this church, we expect that you will be able to come sometimes, not every Wednesday. There are those who are regulars, and we praise God for them. But when you are free on a Wednesday, look for some church activity around your area from this, from this uh, church. And another one is in Corona with... Um, Reverend Mokafo, another one in the valley with Reverend Okwamedwa. So please come and enrich your life. Uh, there's deliverance service on the last Friday of this month. This Friday. Is it possible that at, uh, on this day of enlargement, you can ask some people who you know need prayers to join us on Friday? That's another way of enlargement. Um, on Saturdays, first and third, youth meetings at 8 a.m., women's prayer meeting in this church. We always remind you, and some do come. Men's fellowship meeting last Sunday of the month and women's fellowship meeting. Please, women especially, we have something new we are introducing and we please want you to be there and tell others who are not here to come last Sunday for a special introduction of some things we want to do in our, with our women. Worship team is asked to wait and also and women executive Please wait after church. We thank God for those who are here, like Meg, who was sick. She's able to be here. We thank God for Samuel Keke, who we haven't heard of. He called the pastor and was saying that he's do doing well. So we thank God for helping us, those who are sick and those who are far away. May we continue to remember them in Jesus' name. And uh, this sermon comes to me as a very shy girl when I was a, a younger girl. I didn't really know how to be bold and go outside like Uzo. 
So we should have a special prayer in our homes for Uzo. But as a, as a shy girl, I knew the Lord and I loved the Lord. And one of the things you can do where you are not as bold as those who are on the street is to ask yourself, I ask myself, am I a Christian? Is it a good thing? I bought a new car, I told everybody. I got an apartment, I told everybody. I have Jesus in me, I will tell everybody who comes to my house. I will tell people who ask me, even in school when I was teaching here, they heard some things about my family. The principal called me, how did you do it? I, I, I used the opportunity to tell him, to tell her about Jesus. May we pray every day for an opportunity. There are so many opportunities. Somebody can visit you. How are you? Oh, we are fine. We thank God. No. Since I started following the Lord, look at what happened with my child here. Look at what happened with me as I was driving. Natural things. You don't have to open the Bible and thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord is what is in your life. What is in your life is thus says the Lord. You don't need to know all the Bible. All you need is, are you a true Christian and can you say what has been happening to you? If we are not able to say it, we ask ourselves a question again. Because I know that in Reverend Wokafor's store, he tells people, he leaves tracks. He tells people about the Lord. And he has brought some here. In your apartment, oh, sister, I haven't seen you since. Oh, I've been busy. I went to church the other day. We are learning. We are learning. Use something. Corner the person into hearing the gospel. In a very easy way, let it be a part of our life. That's what we are expected to do as Christians. And may God bless us as we imbibe all this in this enlightenment month to extend it to the rest of our lives. Think about who you are going to meet after church. Can you tell them, I went to church. It is good to go to church. We learned this. It has changed my life. This is not another sermon, but a reminder. It's an announcement that this is what we do in this church and what we should be doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Offering time. <laughs>
worthy I praise. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him, Jesus, I am. Lift him up, he is worthy I praise. Lift him up, lift him, Jesus, I am. Lift him up, he is worthy I praise. mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to this place safely, Father, for meeting us here in our places of special areas of need. We thank you, Father, because you have blessed us to be able to give this offering unto you. And we ask you, Lord, that you please take it, Lord, and use it to do your will within this church, Lord, to enlarge your body, enlarge our territory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We uh, invite the pastor to. Oh, sorry. Is there anyone that's coming that is with us today for the first time? Please. First time visitor. Can you raise your raise up your hands if there's any, please? Anyone for the first time? Okay. Can Ikechuku stand up, please? Can Ikechi come up? Ikechuku come up here. We need everybody. Ikechuku, welcome, welcome. the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are still in the mood of Sunday school enrichment. And they surprising today only a baby is our visitor. It is not good. Brethren, it is not good. We have a challenge especially this month, we have to change our attitude. The preaching, the message is on that direction. The senior pastor had spoken so, I mean, seriously over that issue. And the next week is the end of this uh, Sunday school enrichment. And we have to show good and the total turn point of our attitude. We have to completely make you turn in our attitude for the church growth and every other thing. This is for our spiritual growth. Let us bear in mind there is joy in heaven for just one soul. Just one. Not the nation. One soul saved. We got to be the person who saved that one soul. Let's, next Sunday let us have as many 
visitors as possible, including us coming in time. Please, parents, you take it as a challenge. 10 o'clock is the Sunday school time. We want everybody, as we are here, all of us will be even more will be available on Sunday. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Sunday School Superintendent. God bless you. Good job. Amen. You are looking at me. Um, I talked with Sam Wegete. He felt so happy talking you know, things are going well. He didn't give me any details of what is going well, but uh, he was happy to hear our voice. He said he heard as we were remembering him in our prayers. And that's true. It's our duty to pray for our people who travel or go places. Now, the men did not perform, as a, uh, another uh, announcement, did not perform last. They were given the first place to, to perform as those that will introduce, start the Sunday school and end the Sunday school last week. They didn't do it. It's unlike men. I'm a man. It's unlike us. So I'm encouraging us. I was here though, but I'm encouraging the men to do something this week, this next Sunday. Amen? Amen. Are men in agreement? Yes. See? <laughs> you see how it sounded? Yes, we are. Are men in agreement? Yes, we are. They said, they just at least. Affirm. They say, will is where. When is that man in agreement? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are. Thank you. That is the president. Yes. Say it again. Yes, we are. Praise the Lord. Yes. We look forward to, he, to being here next Sunday. And I'm praying God to bless you this week. Amen. 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 Shall we all stand? It's a wonderful privilege to be here and to hear the testimonies of what God is doing. These are the things we tell others. I wish they were here. Those others who are here, to hear what is happening, they will be so excited. Nobody will be disappointed. I'm telling you, this is what is lacking in many other places. So as God is doing it, Let's invite others to come and be refreshed and be blessed and be encouraged by what he's doing to his children. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we thank you again for another wonderful day in your presence. Father, each time we come into your presence, we, we get refreshed. We don't want to come stale and go stale. We want to be refreshed by your spirit. We want to be encouraged. We have been encouraged. Father, we pray that this inner strength which we have received will carry us through this week. In a, through this week into our offices, our places of work, wherever we go to do our duties. Father, we pray that wherever we drive to or walk to, we will have that encouragement in our inner person. In the name of Jesus. Father, help us to open our mouths 
pick up our phones and call our friends and neighbors. Help us, O oh Lord, encourage us, O oh Lord, to do that little, to make an effort towards their conversion, towards their being reached by you. Help us to sow that seed. Help us to take that step, drive away that fear from us. Help us, O oh Father, to do obey you in this way, to submit to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, come in our conversations, in our deliberations, O oh Lord, in our sharings, everywhere we go, because you are in us, you can't, you can't abandon us and leave us. So Father, we pray, O oh Lord, our God, that the enemy will not get us. Rather, we will get him Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray for Ozo that he might recover fully Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for Sam Wekeke that he will continue to be covered. Amen. And all those who, are, who have traveled from here, Lord, cover them Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you cover us at our places of work. Anyone that who's, who is having any shaking at his workplace or her workplace, Lord God, we, inter we ask you to intervene for us Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are asking, O oh Lord, for a special covering for those in health care, those who are dealing with patients, various sicknesses, one kind or another. Protect them, O oh God. Protect them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. In all things, be thou praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.